like squeaking and it was yeah. destroyed. Like your own brand, your own company. But here's how the debate started. I think the changes made this watch a lot more wearable. I'm excited to introduce Chris. It looks like y'all got pretty cleaned out. I already know they're gonna have some complaints. You know, obviously communication with everybody was a little slow. Remember did that issue with the jail? I talked about it for months, but it's out. You're still gonna have the same issue. Not sure what's in there, but you know. It's all for you guys. These are the questions I have to answer. The time kills deals, man. It's going to be a big year here in 2023, so. Before this week's episode, I want to make a few announcements. First and foremost, Happy New Year's to everyone. Haven't had a chance to engage the audience with that. We have so much in store for you guys this year. I am super excited. I mean, we plan on creating way better content because we're going to have more personalities. We are hiring. I'll talk to you about that in just a few minutes. We plan on having way more inventory and uh, overall better client experience with some key hires that are actually starting this week. So second thing is the Rolex giveaway. Thank you for everyone that purchased something on our website over the last almost two and a half months during the sweepstakes. Some lucky winner is going to get a Rolex Explorer. Now, we did the entire sweepstakes through a third party. For legal reasons, we just wanted to make sure everything was buttoned up. So it's ran by US Sweepstakes and Fulfillment. They're gonna be announcing the winner of this Rolex on January 10th. So the time that this video comes out, we're gonna find out who wins. We'll make the announcement on Instagram. So follow Grand Caliber Co on Instagram. But yeah, some lucky client is gonna get this watch. Hopefully we can fly them out to Dallas and uh, get an opportunity to meet them face to face. As I mentioned, we are hiring. Uh, we plan on making some big hires this year, uh, especially in the first six months of the year. But the first position that is available is a sales rep or sales associate. We have Victor, we have Jai, we have Alfred, and we have Marco. We wanna add another member to our team. So please email your resume to Grand Cal actually it's careers at grandcaliber.com. You can also find the posting on LinkedIn. Matt, if you can show the link here. We are excited to add another sales rep to our team. Without further ado, back to your regular programming. Uh, oh my God, it's a lot. There we go. Uh, we did a full overhaul, everything Great. checked out. We yeah. did a refit. You remember how the watch was? It was like right? squeaking and it was yeah. destroyed. Well, you remember the, yeah. the, the, how, yeah. the, how many scratches it's this my thing had? Daily driver. Oh, it gets man. Beat well, it's, it's ready to be your daily Perfect. driver. Perfect. Oh, it looks great. So. Oh my God, it's like brand new. Yeah, so my guy does a really good job. Jeez. Obviously, refit. Yeah, great. That looks awesome. Appreciate y'all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you pay the invoice? I right? haven't, no. Okay, okay. For everything, it was like 375 Perfect. Yeah. Uh, you guys do Mac and Express? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They'll charge 3%, but whatever. No problem. So when you first brought the watch in, and you would shake it, it would go, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It sounded like, like you were like, like a like scraping, a like a record. How old is that watch now? I mean, you've had that for. Yeah, I've been wearing it for four or five years, and I got it, and it was already maybe a year or two. Someone so Rolex on it. average is, you know, they, they say you're supposed to service them every five years. So that adds up. So that adds up. Yeah. yeah. I bought myself a GMT today. Really? Yeah, What'd you get? Yeah. Oh, there you go. Oh, no. Of course, you do the vintage stuff. <laughs> <laughs> 6542. But I will admit that the bezel is aftermarket, sadly, but that's fine. Still, though. So you, know much a, you know how much a freaking uh, original Bakelite bezel loose would cost? No. If you find one no nice clue. without cracks, you're going to pay between thirty to 40000 Really? Yeah. So the vintage stuff has not taken the big dip. Everything not really. Else has. Vintage has been a good, good, good foundation it's for good most to people to like hold their money in. I mean, of course, everything dipped, so like, but like, nothing took a plunge like the modern stuff. Right. Like, you know, the modern yeah. stuff really plunged because there was way, you got to think about it, like, there's far more people buying the modern stuff than there are vintage right. anyways. So the vintage guys are just like, all right, whatever. Like stuff went up really anyway, anyways naturally, but it came down. Stuff came down maybe like five, ten percent versus like 50, 60 percent. Right. Yeah. You know, like I mean. So that always on now, like some probably look for something else. And like right after Q1, I'll probably like try to reassess and see what else I want to add to the box. And so part of me thinking vintage because it didn't take that hit, but then part of me thinking well. Since the new stuff did take the hit, buy it now. This and is a great time yeah. to buy. Any, anything you buy right now is great. It looks so, like y'all got pretty cleaned out too from the holidays. Yeah. You know, two of the cases were empty. Yeah. That's great. We have the uh, smallest inventory in North Texas. <laughs> That's a good thing. That's a good title to have, I'd say. <laughs> like father, like son, I guess. <laughs> very different, but very much the same, you know. Now that they, you know, you get this in Jubilee. Mm -hmm. um, this is the old school Jubilee bracelet. You can look at the, look, look how old, here, I'll show you something. But this watch, if you look at the bottom, look how this is how old it is. This is how they did the metal. They folded it over. They just basically crimped it on the back on the back side, and oh, okay. and then they just punched the stamp at the end of it. Like yeah. it's such a different yeah, such a different more thing. Uh, 
like I don't know artisan or something. Very industrial. Yeah, like. yeah. There you go. It's very industrial. Like like it's totally different from the way they do, right, it, do it now. Where it feels very like like that watch is gonna look the same for the next thirty four. Right. I don't exactly. Think that's why it's my favorite. I've got a, a older present. I actually know the reference on it, but an older present. But I only wear that. Like I wear it New Year's Eve. Or something. Yeah, yeah. You know, this true. is daily kick around. I haven't even thought about what watch I'm gonna wear in New Year's Eve. I feel like it's gotta be gold. All gold. Something. Gold. Yeah, maybe. That's, that's the vibe. Knowing me, I'll probably just throw this on a strap. Yeah, there you go. Call it a knife. Well, yeah. people who know will know. Yeah. That's, that's what's not, cool that's, about that's, that one. That's my favorite kind of watch. Yeah. It's, it's the if you know, you know watch. Right. All right, we just started the brand new year. It's January. I, I look like there's a date here, but there's no date. <laughs> I'm excited to introduce Chris. Uh, he's coming in as the COO of our company. We've had a lot of conversations. I think one of the biggest things that he's gonna help us do is shape the company culture, right? So he's gonna oversee the sales team. He's gonna help create a mission statement, some core values. Anything else on top of your head? No, that's it, man. Just make sure that we're getting everybody firing on the same page and get the sales team together, get our core values and everything and, and get up and running. He's also gonna do a lot of uh, hiring. As I've said to you guys in the past, 2022 wasn't the sexiest year. I mean, we had to really put our head down and just work really hard to get the company where it is now. But we're in a position where this company can really start to grow in 2023. So we do plan on doing a lot of the hire or a lot more hirings in 2023. So Chris is going to be a big part of that. You'll see him mostly behind the scenes. You know, Chris is really helping develop the business, but you'll see him in probably some scenes here and there. But most of the time, I, I'd probably expect you to be behind the scenes. Yeah, they say I have a face for radio, so I'll <laughs> try to stay behind the scenes. Yeah, we're excited for what this year has in store. So excited to share that with you guys. Hey, what's that? Dr. Mice, man, how you doing today? Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want to talk to him about. That's you, you like that? You, you know, Marco? Yes, that's right here. That's happening. Yeah, yeah, I would much rather set it you for 11 than set it to him off at left five. Just be through with it. Yeah, I see you. Okay, let me see if it's sold. I mean, I'm pretty sure we can do that. Let me, um, I was trying to get this deal done through Christmas, but, you know, obviously communication with everybody was a little slow, which understandably everybody's with their family. Let me see if my guy's still good to go. And if that's okay. the case, then yeah, we got a deal. I'll lock it in. I'll lock it in. All right. Just give me a call back, Vic. Let me know what's happening. Okay, I'll show you, man. All right, check it. All right, I don't see any though. I mean, he didn't even bring that up. You know what I do see? I see a massive swerve from the polishing wheel swerving in the other lane. Yeah, well, we didn't do that. <laughs> so whoever he took it to. That's the only thing I see. It needs a polish. It needs a polish, yeah. <laughs> My guy, well, uh, let me call him. Time kills deals, man. I hate calling people like two I days mean, after Christmas. That's, uh, it's funny though, because all right, I could have got it sold, right? My guy would have netted 11.5, but he said not to sell it and would rather sell it to Marco for 11. Well, he wants to net 11, because if we sell it for 11.5, he's losing 10%. No, we told him he would net 11.5. Well, why does he, he want to sell it for less then? Exactly. <laughs> I'm not right I, th I think he thinks. Oh, I think bro, he thinks I, he's netty. No, I texted it to him. Look, GMT, where you would net eleven point five. What's up, bro? How are you? He's good. How, hey, did you bring the day chest? I did. You actually have a trench coat full of watches, literally. And cat hair. Damn, dude. Wrapped it up like leftovers. You gotta keep it protected. This thing came from a really beaten family. It was. Uh, it was enjoyed for sure. Previously enjoyed. You really know how to make watches brand new again. This watch was. Um, Seriously beat up. I mean, if you, this is a totally different watch. How's it? Polish. Oh, yes. If you need them today. If you can do them today, that'd be great. But um, tomorrow would be fantastic. You know, obviously I won't really mess with the lugs too yeah. much. That way it still gives it a little bit of that like pre-owned character. I don't, I just don't, well, I didn't want the case touch to be honest. Period? I just, because all I want to do, all I'm trying to accomplish here is get that high polish off. They high polish this bracelet. It doesn't need to be high polished. It's, it was never born high polished. I just want to restore it back all, to satin. All brush, no. Yeah, I don't even want to touch the case. The case is really okay. fine. You will see a difference though. I mean, like if the case has a couple of scuffs here and there, then you will see like a pretty I'd rather see a difference 
in, in that and, than and, have a polished yeah. center link watch yeah, it's when it's not even like correct. Otherwise, this is a really cool watch. Yeah, whoever did that needs it's, to go to jail. It's just not the way it should be. I'd rather just restore it back to where. Do you have a coffin or something that I can put yeah. this in carefully? Yeah. Yes. What are you gonna do with this room? What? It's gonna be an open room for a watchmaker or a polisher. Literally, a watchmaker is gonna take like the very corner, and that's it. Then the yes, polishing guy might get that corner, and that's it. <laughs> like, we put a, a wall up divider and make this into a client room. Because I went to the AD, and their client rooms are like, there's no windows. Really? It's all like, yeah, Rolex branded. It's like, it looks like you're inside like a bookcase almost. Well, yeah, yeah. I was thinking was, do we want to buy like the tools machinery so he doesn't have, like maybe he can just come here when he has time to do all of our polishing stuff. Like maybe he stays an hour for one day, maybe two, three hours one day just to knock it out and then he can go so the watches don't have to leave. That's what I was thinking. In my opinion, the best thing for you to do is to have your own company that you 100% own. I actually just uh, finished paying paperwork for my LLC. Nice. So. Congrats. Nice. Thank you. Nice. Now, it gets a little tricky because if we start buying stuff, which I'm happy to do, technically he's a, he'd be a contractor. Yeah, 1099. Yeah, which we can't supply equipment. You wouldn't be a contractor, you would just be your own company that's just working wherever you are. That's my goal. Preferably, we'd like to have here your own brand, your own company, you just have to have, happen to have a location. Yeah, we're just partners. That's yeah, all. that's just it. Partners. I think your services are in so high of a demand that it would never make sense for you to go work for someone when you can have your own company and reap in the benefits yourself. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know the person, bro. You yeah, bro, but it's the same. You can say the same thing with car sales, bro. Man, I'm just saying. You it's... think of your last five deals. You didn't have to break down that watch. They already knew about it. You found a watch that but they wanted. But it's not. But that that that's the same with cars too, bro. Man, like, nah. like, bro, if I want somebody to buy a better car, I'm gonna talk the f out of the better car. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna. gonna to I'm gonna explain. bring them through. Why? You gotta but explain that, it's just functions, the benefits of those functions. You got. A Honda versus Toyota, so you gotta explain MPG. You but gotta you do explain. the same thing with watches, bro. What do you mean? I, I, no, no, I, I say, definitely have to tell listen, you why bro. The Sky Builder is better than the Daytona. Like, you either want the Daytona or you want the Sky. But it's all about price. But we're talking about function, though, right? Nah. You could sell somebody on functions on watches and function on cars. I'm just saying. Basically, what we were saying is not necessarily us, but in general, right? You can somewhat be what's called an order taker, right? Somebody calls in, hey, I want this piece, great. I found this piece. You got to their price, boom, the deal's done. And a lot of clients, like breaking down, itemizing every single thing, trying to sell that customer. The client's already done his research for the most and it's sold already. He just wants you to find that watch at a reasonable price. It's the same thing with cars, bro. If you're a good salesperson, you don't have to talk about the price to sell something. You know what I mean? I'm just saying, it, it, there's a different level. I, but here's how the debate started. I'm saying that I would like a, another sales guy to come on because I would rather have 10 clients I can put all of my time in than 100 clients that I'm giving pieces of my time in. That's pretty much how this debate started. And then it got into different levels of sales. <laughs> I, I agree with that. I just think there's no reason if we realistically get five leads a day, there's no reason why. Okay, let's just say five, well, five leads, a leads a day for every day in a five days a week is 25 leads, right? Mm -hmm. There's no well, reason. We don't get, bro, we get we get leads every single day though. Bro. But what I'm telling you, but what I'm telling you is 150 leads for each of us is 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 a is, is a lot in because a we month. don't we can't give everybody that so quality of time. You get five That's leads a day, right? There's five days in a week. That's 25 people. There's no reason why day by day Bro. you can't give those people all of your time. And and, and I agree with you, but eventually it gets to the point where you have so many people that you need to give so much time to because not every deal is, hey, you want this? Bye. Thanks. There's hours of sourcing. There's hours of talking to that client. There's hours of relationship building. It but it, it gets to the point where there's just a little bit too much. And that's why I want another sales guy so he can help us with that. Do we need one? Yes. Will it happen? Yes. You're still going to have the same issue if you can't keep up with 150 leads that's a not, month. I know, but that's not what my, my point is. Well, if we had another sales guy, it would have just minimized that. It would take longer for that. And then we have the ability to like... Like this. We had another sales person, To right? prioritize. With, with I don't think the leads are too much at all. I think we get a lot of them. You got to sift through. A lot of people are just asking questions. A lot of people aren't really buying. 
And then the ones that are buying, I feel like they're pretty easy to read out and, and help out with. I didn't work here when you guys were doing all this before to see what, you know, what it gets to. I think it's been comfortable, but then again, I don't know if you had another guy, if it's going to be way easier. Not, I don't know. I have not about, it's honestly tough. But here's the thing. It's not about the leads being too much. It's about having leads that you can take the time that's needed for them. You take somebody like Marco, right? You can add 10 more people. No matter what, he's still going to have that book of business. Well, that's different because but Marco's not, Marco. And I don't know, like adding on and you wanting to deal with your 10 people. How, I mean, I don't know what your business really works with, but how often are you dealing with those people when you help them out? To having a new guy come in it takes it takes it takes more than a few hours of talking to somebody to build a relationship that you need in this business what's up boy it'd be nice to have this thing Jimmy Chu. What up, what's up what's up dude we just been having this talk my whole thing was like even now let's say we get five leads a day there's no true reason why we can't you know make sure that we're reaching out quality service to those five leads i mean alpha was saying okay that's 150 plus a month but there's no reason why it should build up and add up to that much if we're utilizing our time correctly. It's true, but eventually it gets to a point where it's too much. There's no way we could reach out to every single person and give them the quality time that they need to build the relationship that we want to give them. I just think we can, man. Well, not we not saying we don't need another person. That's great. Like that, I'm we're growing. We, so. I'm saying it would help if we had another sales guy to just divvy up the leads a little bit more so we can spend the quality time with the people that we need to. Your proposal is to hire another person. Yeah. And I'm yeah, not yeah, against yeah. it at all. Like that's, I'm, my whole thing about it was yes, but that's not gonna change our book of business, right? We can give that quality time right now and when we have another person. I get overwhelmed as when I look at my leads. I get overwhelmed. Oh, but that's because I get, if we stay on top of it from the jump, you wouldn't I, get that way. But I do as best as I can, but because I'm spending so much time with five or six clients, I can't I can't follow up with everybody. I, it's just impossible for me. These are the questions I have to answer. <laughs> well, we are going to be hiring probably four to six people in the next six months. Yeah. One of them would probably be a salesperson. So if yeah. you guys are interested, there's a <laughs> careers link at grandcaliber.com. Apply. <laughs> We're looking yeah, yeah. for... Uh, oh, Someone to be at the front desk. We're looking for a videographer. We're looking for a sales rep and three other roles that are already accounted for, so. To backtrack, Hertz & Co. hasn't really been able to generate leads in 2022 because I've told them not to. Because one of my fears was, I don't want leads to come in and then they're given bad service, right? Because we only get so many opportunities with these clients. They might've been clients with TPG when we were TPG. They might've been clients at Grand Caliber when we first started. They're only gonna give us two or three opportunities. So I told Hertz Own Co. to hold off on leads. Now, with the team where it's at, with the people that are coming in, I've told them to just go beast mode in 2023. Mm -hmm. So they're gonna ramp up as many leads as they can this month. For good or for bad, you're gonna see a lot more leads. And then I think it's our job to figure out how you guys manage those leads, but you're gonna see a lot more leads. The question that we have is, what can you guys handle before we bring in another person? Hey, what's up, gentlemen? My mom got a bunch of gifts for you guys. You want to go check them out? I'm not sure what's in there, but you know, it's all for you guys. So, uh, have at it. done deal. Again, I don't know what they all are. So, nice of her. You think it's little treats or? I don't think it looks like you, man. Right, right. You get a gift. You get a gift. You get a gift. <laughs> <laughs> we should wrap them nice. We should all try to right. Oh, it is. We open it. I'm gonna guess this one's in a white box. <laughs> that part's accurate. Happy hippo. Mm -hmm. Okay, those are. Incredible. Oh, what? Now that you said that. Yeah, peanuts, peanut butter. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know. They're just incredible. I've never heard. What is this? It's German. Bumples? All right, so what you got, guy? What is, oh, is this like European candy? Let me see. Happy Hippo. Yeah, I think so. Hey, those things right there. Offer for me on those. These right here. Hi, yeah. Uh, shortbread cookies. What's that, Alfred? <laughs> it's like these waffle things that have oh, okay. honey, got some coffee. honey, caramel, and... Oh, that's tight. Look at this. Oh, that's some extra right. coffee. Are those stroop waffles? Yeah. yeah. Can blue oh, those are incredible. Man. Are they? Yeah, they are addicting now. Be careful. You going to give that... it a little taste and yeah, see? Yeah. 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 Alright. Oh, I thought it was going to be crunchy. Oh, Zan, you got to open the big one. Oh, it's heavy. Oh, maybe it's a bottle. Alright. <laughs> okay, I might need your knife now. Coffee in the How fun! Coffee syrup, oh. caramel. Right. Okay, do you guys say caramel or caramel? 
caramel. Oh, I say caramel. <laughs> <laughs> Roasted hazelnut. Jamaican Blue Mountain is like some of the best coffee you'll get. Tommy, thank you to your mom and you for delivering these. But yeah, all these gifts are great. We're probably just gonna eat these for lunch now, a bunch of candy. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to Showroom Showcase. We got some awesome stuff that I wanna show everybody. But first, we'll do a quick little wrist check. Got a date just, one, two, six, three, three, four, 2021 complete. Let's go with the first one. Let's just go huge, let's just go big off the gate. Solid gold Daytona. Speaks for itself, green dial Daytona in yellow gold. It is the reference number 116508. This is a 2019 complete. A little bit of scuffs on it. Overall, really good condition. You know, it's just your normal wear, but nothing aggressive. It just has a few hairlines. This is known as the John Mayer. Good amount of weight to it. Price that we're rolling with this one is uh, 71,000. Like I said, it's a 2019 complete. Next one is a new release, came out this year in March. I had a lot of hype going into it. And I think a lot of people are kind of surprised with what Rolex actually did with it. It's the Air King. It is the reference number 126900. I don't know if people are too familiar with the previous Air King, but they added an extra zero on the dial to give it a little bit more symmetry all around. Still has a lot of fives, but it makes it look a little better. And then they got the sports model clasp on here. So it has that double locking clasp. It gives a little more protection, a little bit more of a, an adventure watch now at this point. And then obviously it still has that um, brushed stainless steel all the way through. And then the biggest difference that people really notice other than the clasp is the crown guards up on the side. And this one's cool, almost has a lucky crown. So they changed it up a good amount, you know, about three big things really changed on it. To me, it's still not my favorite Rolex, but I don't. I like this one a lot more. I think the changes made this watch a lot more wearable and a lot more of a, of a piece I'd actually buy compared to the previous one. And they thinned down the case a lot. So it's no longer holding that Milgauss case. It's holding down you know, its own case. It looks more like a Submariner size watch. We have this one available. It is a 2022 for 9,500, complete set. Nearly brand new. It's been lightly, lightly pre-owned. You know, it'd be great for a first Rolex or if you travel a lot, it would be cool if you're you know, a pilot to get an Air King. And I think this is the one to get between the Air Kings that they've made in the past. Fun fact, my first Rolex was an Air King, but it was the older one, the 14000. I think that's what the reference was. It was a 34 millimeter, but yeah, it was a cool piece. Go with the old classic. The one watch collection, some call this. If you were to ever get one, you'd get this. The Rolex Submariner. This is the new reference, so the best way to always tell if you're out and about and you wanna look at one real quick is if it has that crown between Swiss and made. Um, that shows it's the new reference, which is 126610LN. This is a 2022 complete. We are asking 14,000. It is lightly pre-owned. Not a lot of wear, just kind of like that Air King. It just has a couple of hairlines on it. If you were to have one watch forever, I think a lot of people would choose the Submariner. It's a great, great piece. It's one that everyone needs in their collection if they start building out. It's like pretty much the first or second one someone ever gets. So what do you think of the 41 millimeter? I really like this. I think it um, holds up well and I really like the new movement that they put in here. But yeah, the Submariner, ultra classic, one of the best ones you could ever get from Rolex. All right, we're gonna knock it out with Rolex's most complicated watch, the Skydweller. This is a, a true fan favorite. Obviously, you know, Vic has one of these, so it really is a great piece. I love looking at it every day. It's the 326934. This is a 2022 complete. We are asking 23,000 for it. Lightly pre-owned, but yeah, let's take a look at this thing. A lot of people don't know how to set the functions on a Skydweller, and the way you do it is you actually rotate the bezel. So it has three different clicks that it works with, and that will let you set the GMT, lets you set the month, the time, and then obviously the date. So those are the complications that it goes through. So this is Rolex's most complicated watch. Comes in a thicker uh, case. For me, unfortunately, it is a little too big for me. I can never really wear these. It wears at a 42, but I feel like it wears at a 44, but it's really just a 42 millimeter. Right here, we got the blue dial, the most desired one that they make as far as the sky dwellers go in the stainless steel. A lot going on on that dial, and I like a busy dial. I think this is just a perfect watch. I just wish they made it in a 40 millimeter. Then I'd definitely pick one up. 23,000, lightly pre-owned, complete set. That completes the showroom showcase. I'm looking at all these watches and all the crowns are almost sort of near lucky crowns. It's kind of cool. Let us know what you think. Um, what are you liking? Today we did all Rolex, but do you want to see some more brands in here? Uh, I'd be happy to throw them in for you guys. But yeah, these are just some awesome everyday heavy hitters. Jimmy tells me they've got a lot of work done back in the uh, back room. So let's find Jimmy and see what's up. Hey! Show me what's going on back here. It looks way different. Yeah, this was my uh, New Year's Eve and New Year's Day uh, concoction. The goal here is to really move to the back office uh, for our operations team. As many of you guys know, we have a fairly large space and we haven't really been utilizing it. I've said this time and time again, so you guys are gonna get very bored of it, but 2022 was a lot of 
cleaning up our business, uh, making sure that the infrastructure was done properly, making sure we cleared out any hurdles or anything that we had to address so that we can run in 2023. And so in 2023, there's gonna be some big changes. We're gonna move our operations team back here. It's gonna take a couple weeks, but we started. You're gonna see a table here with three cameras pointing down and this is where your incoming and outgoing shipments are gonna be. We already have cameras next door for this process, but what I'm gonna do is enhance the cameras where you can actually see not only what's going in the box, but you'll be able to see the detail of the shipping label. Those little things will really help in terms of security. There's gonna be a big whiteboard here. You move into this space. Uh, we got three standing desks for our operations team. I sit over there. We're gonna have our IT guy. We're gonna have a couple of key hires that are gonna be starting this year. So this team is really gonna expand. I know a lot of people are gonna comment about hiring in this type of economy. This is something that we've planned for for the last almost six months. I mean, like I said, we were putting our head down in 2022, getting the business right financially, getting the business right from a policy and procedure, from an infrastructure standpoint to allow us to grow in 2023. Over here, you're gonna have a long shipping table with all the different boxes, the shipping boxes, the shopping bags, really a prep station for our operations team. All of our boxes, when we get uh, a watch in, we take the watch, we put them in the safe or in the showroom. We take the box, we shrink wrap it with all of the booklets. That will be along this wall here. If you come up next door, we removed our entire photography area. So uh, our photography team doesn't know about this yet. They're coming in tomorrow, so we'll see. I already know they're gonna have some complaints. I look at little things, the attention to detail. And right now, as you can see, the lights coming in from uh, right to left. So it's gonna really impact them from a shooting perspective. So hopefully they're gonna shoot on this side. All of these light switches, you can control uh, separately. Look, for creatives, they're really picky. Mm -hmm. They're really sensitive. I have other ideas with blackout shades to just cover up the light. I don't know if you guys have seen our product photography. Hopefully you have. I think it's incredible work that they do and those little details make a difference. Not so sexy, but boxes. Uh, we have branded boxes. We've had them for about a month, month and a half. You guys have maybe seen it in an older video, but uh, we haven't really been using them. I've been waiting for the start of the year to, to get it going. So we have our shopping bags, our boxes, a little break area. I wanna make this into a conference room right here. So you'll see, I don't know if the camera can show, there used to be some type of glass here uh, as a partition. We'll turn this into a conference room, put a TV up, you have a whiteboard ready to go. So that looks great. The longer term vision is to actually block this off convert this area right here into a bar. Doesn't look pretty right now. Coming along here, you have a new, what will start as an employee break room or a lounge, and then eventually turn into a client lounge. Haven't really put much resources here because it's one of the lower priorities right now, but putting a TV up here, likely some bookcases with some watch books. I want something really cool here. I don't know what that is at the moment. You can get another fish tank. <laughs> Maybe another fish tank. <laughs> I'm gonna just, be hesitant because I don't want people to, to rip me to shreds, but uh, that'll be right here. Going over here, this used to be really messy, dirty, and it spent literally the whole weekend. You cleaned it all up. Cleaned it all up. This is Marco's authentication studio. Um, yeah, it's getting better. I think 2023 is where we really start to have fun with it, guys. You know, I, I really respect everyone that has given us the viewership over the last year. I know it hasn't been fun, you know, some of our content is great. Some of it's boring to some, some of it's been dry, but really 2022 was focusing on that infrastructure to allow us to really grow this year. So we're gonna be hiring another videographer. We're gonna really focus on more YouTube content, uh, more travel, more client interactions, ramp up our marketing, ramp up just personalities in the office. It's gonna be a big year here in 2023. So what, what do you have to do? Take, a, take this video, <laughs> pin it, and circle back in 12 months and let me know. You just can't get into the what is that? Oh. Okay. Alfredo. What's up? Man? Market update. What you got? What do we got today? Three little surprises. Obviously, I see two sports models and a Omega, so we'll see what, what we have here. First one is the other John Mayer. And before anybody asks, no, I'm not going to court. No, I'm not going to a funeral. <laughs> new year, new standards. Everything I do, I'm gonna try to level it up a little bit. I feel the best, I sell the best when I'm dressed like this. Here's the other John Mayer, the white gold blue dial. These things are pretty underrated. I would say I like this blue dial better than 
let's say the Datejust Blue Dial, or even, I'm gonna get killed for this one, but I like this dial better than maybe the AP Blue Dial, just because of how it shines and how it looks on the white gold, but nothing's better than AP. Let's see, brand new, somewhere around 46 to 47,000. These things topped out at 60, I believe. So these, ones have never gotten much love still going over retail uh, msrp is uh, around forty thousand after taxes depending on where you live could be like forty four thousand but they still bring uh over over msrp from your ad so this one's 2022 we have this consigned for forty six thousand. i know i just said that new prices around that but if you look at this watch it looks pretty close to new uh definitely worn maybe a few times but still i think it's priced great and if you were interested we could definitely work on it for you i can call the consignee see if he wants to negotiate on the price so the next watch what i'll do is i'll mix it up i'll pick up this uh omega here what do we got here so we have a sapphire sandwich the moon watch one thing i love about omega is they never let you forget that they were the first watch on the moon mm. uh <laughs> so and they'll come out with a thousand different ways to tell you these are pretty special um, as far as like the market goes, Omegas never really go super high or super low. They're pretty safe bets. If you can afford to do so, uh, you usually could maybe lose 20%, I would say. To me, I think that's a safe bet for the price point because these are around 55 to 65 hundred dollars the msrp is seventy two hundred dollars obviously on the secondary market it trades below but still a, a great deal a great watch for the money um again you're not losing too much if you buy on the secondary i've seen these trade as low as five thousand and as high as you know seven thousand which is still under msrp which is great perfect watch under ten thousand if you're looking for your like first watch which is also great we have this here for sixty five hundred bucks full set if you're interested just message any of the sales guys down below we have the link in the description this is a great pickup here i see in chrono so it's a daytona <laughs> the panda everybody's favorite favorite daytona right this watch has had one of the craziest ups and downs that I've seen in the watch industry in the past year. The only thing that I would say would be worse than this watch if you bought at the top would be any of the Vacheron overseas. These watches, i seen them sell for, I think the highest I seen it sold for was 54,000, but now they're all the way down to about $32,000, brand new. We have this one here, it's a 2022 for 33,000. We did consign it about a month ago, which the market was around 33. Now it's probably more around 32. Still, you can see them around 33. This is still a great deal for 2022, brand new. What more can I say? The Rolex. When you think of Rolex, you think Submariner, you think Datejust, and you think Daytona. The only thing better than this one is probably this watch right here. My first vintage watch that I bought from Marco. Love it. I'll say I want to keep it forever, but we know how that goes in this, this office. Um, I'm sure Vic understands as well. I've seen used as low as 29,000, 28,500, uh, somewhere around there. You can get like a 2016, 2017 for around that 28 mark. I really don't want to say I see them going lower, but obviously nobody can ever tell the future. These are one of the watches that will absolutely never get below retail. MSRP on these are 14,150 is the last time I checked. I know they just did some price updates, uh, I think yesterday. So I have to double check on what the, the prices, new prices now, but that's it for the market update guys. Like I said last time, if you have any watches that we have that you wanna see a market update on, or if you have any watches that we don't have that you wanna market update on, just let us know. Matt will tell me uh, some random time next week and we'll see what we can do.